Friends, welcome to uh, Lenten Evening Prayer tonight as we gather in the presence of our Lord. Uh, just a reminder, I will read the L with the um, non-bold letter, bold words, and if you'll respond um, with the bold type, that'd be great. Let's begin our Lenten Evening Prayer tonight. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, and immortal. Have mercy on us. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God, of our salvation that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. And may the poor be lifted up. Well, again, uh, let me introduce to you Jonas. Jonas. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and just I don't want to mess up pronouncing your last name because I've actually never had to pronounce your last name ever I just call you Jonas or hey you how do you pronounce your last name the name is correct the name is correct how do you pronounce it uh, K uh, you, you mean my last name yeah how do you say yeah. it yeah how do you crooning Crooning, crooning. Yes. It's a little, I had I had to look for that little double, that umlaut, is that what it is on top of the O? I had to go find that in a special. <laughs> so Jonas, as you all may know, is part of our partner church in Germany. Uh, I'm gonna let him in a minute explain uh, where that is and the name of the church and maybe some how things going in that church. But for right now, I'm gonna invite him to read the scripture lesson for us. Yes, it is in John 1, 4, 16. And there's, there is written, and we have seen and had faith in the love which God has for us. God is love and everyone who has love is in God and God is in him. Amen. I, I should have asked you, you uh, how, how would this be said in German? I don't know how. You probably don't have the Bible with you. I, uh, sh should I read it in German? Yes, yeah. please. Um, Dennis in German, like that. It, it sounds like that. God is Liebe. Und wer in der Liebe bleibt, der bleibt in Gott und Gott in, in ihm. Um, it's um, uh, a funny moment because we have here in Germany a little book and I got it as a gift to uh, Christmas last year for my parents and in this book you have for every single day during the year a little passage of the Bible with a little pray and today is even that uh, message from Captain John what I was uh, reading right now oh. and 
that was a moment where I thought, hey, that is a good moment to, to read it <laughs> from this book and send it to you so that you all can read it. That's great. That's great. So even though most of us know, Jonas, just tell us a little bit about where in Germany you are, uh, kind of give us a visual and then tell us about the church that we're partner churches with, just in case there are folks who were not part of that wonderful experience when you all came over uh, the summer before last or fall before last, I guess it was. Yes, yeah, it's a long time ago since we have been uh, uh, in the USA, but uh, we remember it in our hearts every single day, especially for me. Um, yeah, my name is Jonas. I'm uh, 28 years old. Um, and I'm a part of our uh, parish council in Vada. Vada is a little small parish in the middle of North Germany. Um, um, and we are um, a small church, but uh, we have one big connection and that is to America. <laughs> and uh, in my parish, I had the honor to work for many, many years since 2009 as a youth worker um, without get paid for it. So I do it for my own, for my parish. Um, I work with uh, youth groups. I uh, teach youth group leaders for many years. I was leading the confirmation classes for many years. And now I'm for more than seven or eight years a member of the parish council. And we are trying to lead our parish through every time. Uh, you all know these times are very special for all of us, um, for you, for us. And so we have to handle this very, very special and heavy situation for all our members. And we hope we are doing it as best as we can, yeah. That's great, that's great. And we, we do have just the fondest memories of when you were with us. And I know that there are conversations we were planning to come last year. Of course, the pandemic fouled that up, but uh, we're, I know there's plans to come still in the future. Oh, yes. I yes. think 2022 they're talking about. So we can all look forward to that. Yeah, we hope that we can um, welcome you next year um, because we have a new pastor. I don't know if all of you know it, you know the person, it's Laura Road, and she's our new pastor. And uh, we are very, very happy to have her now in our parish because she brings us together with you. And so um, that is a very, very special moment. It's the first time in the history of our parish that we have a woman in the, um, in the, um, in the office of our pastor, so. We are very, very happy to have her. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yes, we do remember Laura. That's right. So um, now, <laughs> is are there? I, I have some questions I sent to you. I can ask those, but I didn't know if there's anything else you just want to start out by saying. I know I didn't know if you wanted to reflect on the scripture passage or you want to do that later. But I just give you that time, or else we could just go ahead with the questions. Yeah, if make me some some notice so that I'm uh, <laughs> prepared <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for our conversation <laughs> because I'm a little bit nervous. I must confess uh, <laughs> because it's late here and I have to talk English for a long time ago <laughs> and, <laughs> or again. And uh, so I hope you can understand me. If not, please raise your hand and say, "Can you repeat, please?" <laughs> We're, we are understanding you very clearly. You you speak very good English. Thank you. So, um, so you want to go ahead with the questions, or do you want? Do is there something else you wanted to start out by saying? Oh, I think we can uh, start with the questions you sent me. Okay. Um, I so, have the questions here on my second screen. That I can follow you, follow you. Great, I think. So I'll ask the question so everyone knows what I'm what you're answering, uh, Jonas. From your perspective. How is the Christian church doing in your part of Germany? Is it growing? Is it declining? Uh, 
Yeah, um, especially uh, during this special times, it's um, strong declining um, because uh, we have many, um, um, yeah, um, persons who are going out of the church because they lose their jobs or they don't have so much money so that they can uh, pay the church tax. And um, uh, special uh, is the situation that we have more old church members than young church members. And um, I think that is a global situation for, for every church. And um, uh, I don't want to give you an answer to the, one of the next questions, but uh, that is one of our greatest um, 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 points where we have to work in a good way so that we can reach new persons and can show them, hey, church is a cool system. Um, it is a lot of fun to be a part of a church and church is not only uh, the pastor. It's the nurses. It's the nurses. It's um, the kindergarten. It's the school, the elementary school, especially as a um, in your church. You have an elementary school, as I'm right too. So all of that jobs have to be paid. Even my job, because I'm an educator in a Lutheran church here in North Germany, and uh, without the church taxes, I would not be able to do my job. So I'm just curious, if someone comes to church, they have to pay a tax or they have to pay a greater tax if they come? Yes, um, um, that is um, included in our tax system here in Germany. So when you get your money for your work, you have to give a little bit from it to the church tax. And the church tax is going to be uh, split up for every single parish in the north part of Germany, in the west part, in the east part, in the south part. And um, during, especially during the corona time, um, many, many persons don't have the chance to pay the taxes because they need every single money uh, they can um, uh, have for themselves. So uh, that is a quite heavy moment. Yeah, and oh, by the way, Mike, you can, you know, if anything you want to jump in, just start yep. talking. So we'll do. Yep. So, Jonas, here's the the second question I sent to you, um, which was this: What do you think contributes to the Christian Church in Germany growing or declining? What happened historically to contribute to the growth or decline of the church? Um, I think um, uh, one answer is the first, then young members. And um, um, I, I don't want that it sounds bad, but old persons are dying earlier than young persons. So please don't misunderstand me. But uh, so you have more or less memberships uh, or members of a parish. And uh, on the other side, we have um, um, not so much pastors as the last years, the last 20 years, the last 30 years, um, because um, uh, when, the, when young persons um, think, hey, I want to be a pastor, they have to study for, uh, I hope it's a, the right number, seven years. And um, they are sitting in the university and they are learn, learning and learning. And after that, they have to, um, to prove that they are able to, to work in a parish. They have to, to prove it for a year. And um, that is a very, very hard way. Um, I don't know if you all remember Carsten Bahn Rühmann and his wife, Angelica. They have been with us in St. Luke uh, two years ago. And their son, Hans, he's a good friend from me. Um, he's going to be a pastor. And uh, he has to wait one year before he was allowed to go into a parish. So that is a, um, an example where I said, hey, um, there is a point where church can, can make a difference. And they can change it so that young people are 
um, happy to say, hey, I want to become a pastor because I have the chance to it. So, and I don't have to wait year for year for year. Um, and every single person we don't um, put into the jobs as a pastor is a losing person. So we need them. And um, the other fact is um, right now during the social networks, uh, churches have a very, very good uh, position to, to reach new persons. Um, for example, Facebook live services like you are doing, or um, we have the first Insta uh, for, uh, uh, services on Instagram. So that is quite cool. You can put it on your uh, smartphone and watch it on Instagram when a pastor is holding his uh, prayers and they introduce all of us and uh, they ask, hey, what we can, can we pray for? What um, is in your heart? What, uh, what, uh, uh, yeah, what are your uh, sorrows? What do you want? What do you need? And um, I think that is a way where, you, where we can sh uh, show young persons that we are cool. We are not old, we are cool. And we have the, the power and uh, the motivation to, to change the ways to be present. Got it, got it. So, so did I hear you say that there's more people that want to be pastors than there are Churches for pastors, or are there less pastors than our churches? Um, this, the second one, we have more churches than uh, we have pastors. Got it. Um, are there a lot of empty churches because of that? Uh, net, no, there were no pastors in that church. Um, yes, we have that situation. Um, we are putting together um, a lot of churches um, to one area. Um, um, that is, at, um, for an example, I hope I can say it in English so that you understand it. Um, the North Church of Germany is, um, is uh, split up in, in different uh, uh, church circles. And inside of that uh, circles, it's like um, Ohio, Columbus, the states, and they are split up in counties. Mm -hmm. um, they are uh, going to put together during this years um, uh, because there are pastors who are too old to do the job they um, um, and we don't have enough young persons to to um, uh, to go into these um, parishes and so we have to put them together so that we have for example five parishes and only three or four pastors for these five parishes. And they have to handle it so that they can make it possible that every people have the chance to go to his church. Yeah. So last week we had, um, Yeah, uh, Heather, that's exactly true. What's happening? It's uh, if you see everyone sees that chat, it, that's happening in small churches in the United States as well. Uh, in fact, I think Pastor Mike, you you started out serving a two point parish, right? I did. Yeah, yeah, and it's increasing the because uh, Jonas, the same thing has happened in the U.S. of the. In Lutheran Church, the number of pastors is less than the, than the number of churches that need pastors. Yes, and the one in Ohio they're doing is um, they've done this for a number of years. Because of that, they train lay people to become lay ministers. Yes, to serve. Do they? Did the same thing happen in northern Europe, northern Germany? That is the same here. Um, we have the same opportunity opportunity for people, and. Um, I think that um, uh, I don't know if you know that kind of job. It's called diacon. It's like yeah, a pastor. Yeah, yeah, um, that is what I hope I'm going to be in three and a half year uh, mm -hmm. because I'm study for it since October last year. Um, that uh, diacons are the next generation of pastors mm -hmm. so that they can uh, go into the jobs 
of um, parishes who have no pastor and uh, where they can do the job for the parish. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. So we have to, to think church new, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the old system didn't work uh, during the next uh, generations, the next uh, thousand years. We have to change it right now, I think. It's, it's I like the same with the climate, uh, with the clima, with the, um, where we have to change our system as humanity, you know, because we are destroying the planet and we have to make a new plan. And um, I don't say that we are destroying the church, um, but um, we have to find a new way for all of us, for our parishes, for our churches, for the house, for the people, for everyone. Jonas, we had a teeny horning with us last week. She's our a missionary that we support to Freiburg, Germany. I, I think we've told you about her in the past and she may even had some yes. contact with you guys. When she answered the question, what contributes to this growth or decline in the church in Germany and maybe in Europe, she talked about the German schools of theology in, in the past mm -hmm. that contribute to that. Is that something you're familiar with and, and do you agree with what she said? That, it, that the German schools of theology kind of contributed to the decline? Uh, you mean that these uh, schools for, um, uh, for uh, theology have to change it, their system? Do you, did she I, I say that? What, I think what she meant, and, and Pastor Mike helped me out here, but that, that the theology that was being taught in these schools of theology, in schools of theology, and let's say back in the late 1800s and in the 1900s, that what what someone would call the um, Protestant liberal uh, you mean Protestant it's not modern theology. Enough. What's that? Uh, you mean it's not modern enough? Well, I think so it's it more that I, I I think it more that some of the theologians like. Uh, Rudolf Boltman, for example, or Schleiermacher, those other people, you know, kind of were uh, discrediting the uh, authority of the Bible, for example. And uh, so people didn't, people started to think that, you know, the, the, the truth that is taught in the Bible is not, you know, absolute truth, it's more relative. Is this making any sense? Uh, um, well, that is a good question. Um, uh, oh, I don't know if I can answer that question. Um, okay. uh, well, let me let me ask it another. I'm sorry. Way. <laughs> let me ask it another way. That is that is okay. Yeah. Let me ask it another way. In the in your connection with people in Germany, you know, the general yeah. population, not necessarily the people that are going to church, because we understand that there's really a small percentage of people in Germany that are actually going to church. Do people in Germany, do a, a large percentage of people in Germany uh, discount Christianity or, or think that the, that the belief in God is not something that is rational or should be held, do you think? Are people skeptical? Oh, I think that people are skeptical um, um, because um, I must really confess when we came to you, um, I was learning another uh, unknown side of my own faith and my um, um, connection to God and to Jesus because you are living your faith um, um, so powerful and um, the kind how you are uh, celebrating your services is a uh, totally um, um, other kind of like we are doing it here in Germany and um, that is why I, uh, why I'm saying, hey, when I'm a diacon, I wanted to do it like Saint Luke, because that is cool. That is modern. I remember that you are going through the lines of seats and you are holding your prayer, Steve. 
and in Germany you have the pastor in front of the parish he's holding his speech and um, talk about his uh, minds and uh, I think that is not modern enough for that time so that is why I would say people are um, scary or skeptical in, uh, in front of uh, uh, faith or God, Jesus, or going to a service. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So the third question I ask you is, from what you have seen happen in the German church, German Christian church, where, where, where it has gotten to now, uh, what lessons do you think that St. Luke and other Christian churches in the United States of America should learn from what's happened to Christ, the Christian mission in Germany? What are some lessons you think we should learn? Mm -hmm. um, I think we have to learn that um, the old way have to be uh, written in a new version. Um, uh, what I said in the beginning, we have to use the social networks. Um, we have to, to find new ways and um, we have to find new, um, 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 ah, I'm looking for the English word. Uh, I <laughs> will ask the Google translator one moment, please. <laughs> yeah. ah, uh, we have to find new offers for every people if they are in the parish or not um, and we have new uh, to find new offers to, to to catch new members for our parishes and um, I think we have to do that more than often uh, or more than, uh, as in the past with the young people so um, in my parish in Vada we don't have a youth a group since five or six years um, because the youth generation during the last years are not interested and uh, so I try to build with Laura a new uh, generation of youth workers in Vada um, um, uh, to create youth services in our church to create uh, gaming evenings and um, to make them um, the offer to sit in our youth house where they can play some games, some cards, drink some cola, you know, um, make some pizza or uh, what else. And um, yeah, we have to, to be cool. And when I'm asking people who are not in a church or um, uh, people who don't believe in God, um, they give me the answer what church is for them. Yeah, that is a building in the village. It's a building in the city. And for me, um, and I think you will agree with that. Um, the church is not the building. The church is the people, it's the parish, and it is the connection between us as brothers and sisters um, of Jesus. Yeah. So it, it's not the building. The church is right now here. Yeah. yeah. At this moment. And that is yeah. blessed. Yeah. So, Jonas, I'm curious. I, I, that's exciting that you're working with the new pastor to uh, create this in Varda, right? And uh, what what role do you see social media and or the internet playing in that? Because like us, I think you've had online worship services because of COVID. Will that continue? And how? what will that look like as far as reaching more younger folks uh, that may not come to the church at Varder, into the building and experience the people, but they will come to something online, potentially. What do you see? How do you see that playing out? You mean how we have to, to raise it up on Instagram, for example? Maybe, yeah, yeah. What are there other ideas you have? Um, there is a pastor in South Germany, um, in, in Stuttgart, uh, near Freiburg. And um, he's celebrating um, some inst Instagram services. And um, they are asking uh, one or two weeks before the service, every single follower um, in, the, in their stories, hey, what can we pray for? Um, mm -hmm. What are your minds, your feelings during the last three weeks? And um, so they build a connection up. And the same pastor, 
um, invites us to um, be a part of um, um, an hour where he sitting is sitting in front of his uh, smartphone and you can write him questions about his life, about his uh, um, relationship to God, to Jesus, to his faith. Um, because before he's going to be a pastor, he didn't believe in Jesus. So that is a very, very wonderful uh, story. How can a person who don't believe in God and Jesus be becoming a pastor? That is an interesting fact. And uh, then he's sitting for one hour in front of his uh, smartphone and he's talking with you. You can ask him whatever you want. And I uh, think that is cool. Yeah. That is Do you more see yourself doing something like that? Um, not right now, because yeah. um, we have the problem that we are not allowed to, to um, install an uh, internet connection into our church building, mm. um, because it is so old that we will get in very, very big troubles with the law system uh, for old mm. uh, buildings in Germany. And um, <laughs> I would be sitting in a jail, <laughs> not even before I can say amen. So, um, <laughs> so we don't want to do that. Um, but um, maybe Laura has some uh, very cool uh, ideas. And um, mm -hmm. I'm very happy to welcome her at, let me say the truth, um, at the beginning of April. Mm. Yeah. Good, good, good. Well, um, I'm going to open this up here to the full screen. Um, if there is someone who'd like to kind of chip in here, what I'd ask you to do is simply unmute yourself. And as I pan over you, I'll call on you and you can chip in if anything that you've heard Jonah say, or that has come to mind in terms of, you know, what lessons you think we should learn at St. Luke or the Christian Church in the United States, or just some reflection that you have. Uh, so if anyone would like to chip in, just to unmute yourself, and I will call on you. Dennis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just got myself on mute. And, and, and so there are several interesting questions based on how you already put them to, to, to this guy. And so I want to borrow from that a little bit. I think you, you, you were interested in what the old theologians were, 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 were trying to get across in, in, into, into common speech. And what that means is how old blokes like me would think God doesn't mean two nickels worth me, to, to, to me anymore uh, because I've, I've known a whole lot of people who had that experience. I, I give you an example. I know somebody who, when, when the Russian soldiers came into Berlin, they were using his toilet to clean their their fish, and because one of them was so drunk, he flushed the fish down the toilet. He shot the guy. Now that was a guy who God doesn't help me. He helped the guy gone. He said a more obscene word. But he helped the more obscene Russian guys who who flushed his fish down the toilet. So what I'm saying is. Does the apparent no relevance of church still cause a lot of people to stay away from by just using that as one example of the Russians flushing their fish down your toilet? Yeah. I, I, I'm sure that as in our own country, when people are confronted with great evil, either personally in their life or in culture like World War II or the Holocaust or something, it causes people to question, how can there be a God if this happens kind of thing? So, yep. Thank you, Dennis. Um, Who else has something they'd like to share? If you're on mute, I think we lost a few people. 
down to one screen. David Pack, you want to share something? Yeah, Steve. Uh, been a long time since I've been in the church there, but good to see uh, you. I still have a lot of that church. Um, the several years back, uh, when Wanda was alive, uh, Tina, Tina from Germany, yeah. was there, and she talked about the church losing members, but her college and youth group was growing. And I'm wondering if you're still contacting with her and what's going on with her group uh, in Germany. David, I, what I'd encourage you to do if you're able, I, I think uh, Aaron is not here to direct me on this, and but we talked with Tini last week in this forum and uh, we recorded that Zoom call. And I think you can go watch that at our, um, or no, we can, we send it to him. Is that right, Mike? I'm just looking it up right now. I think it's on our website. Yeah. It's either on our website or we can email to you. And Tini talked about what's happening with her, with her ministry there. Good. Uh, one I'll of the, go ahead. Because, you know, I think the same thing is happening in the United States, but the COVID thing has really hurt the church in that I go to, the Lutheran Church. It was a small, it is a small church, but the governor of West Virginia has given orders that churches would not have more than X number of people, and uh, they had to wear masks. And of course, our church is a is an older congregation. There are some younger people in there. Uh, I would like to see the younger younger people to be ten times more than than what we have, but that's uh, uh, not happening. Um, you know, it, it's really a a, a shame. Uh, and you know, we older Christians need to figure out a way that the younger people would be drawn into the church. And uh, I think we've got to think back of our, our younger days in which mom and dad took us to church and we went whenever the church doors were open and that carried through into our older years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, I think. Yeah. Um, can I answer it? Sure. Because I have some, some uh, minds about that. Um, 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 uh, Sarah and I, uh, Sarah is my wife, uh, we are talking a lot how we will educate our kid when we uh, should have one in the future. We hope that we are able to have children because we wish it so much. And um, I said, hey, it is very important for me, and she uh, is agree with that, that our child is baptized. So, and uh, I want to to um, to give my kid the chance um, to to get a connection with my faith to Jesus to God and um, to see that it is not forbidden or that it is not uncool to 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 say hey I believe in Jesus and that is my that is my point of view and you maybe have your point of view you don't believe in it. But I believe that there is a God who is protecting us, who is guiding us through every time, through every year. And um, he's always behind us, even if we don't see him. And um, um, one wonderful uh, example is, um, you all know that I'm a cancer patient. And um, when I was laying in the hospital in 2009, one night before my second um, operation, um, um, in the back um, of my head, um, I pray, um, um, and as every evening, and I see a tower, a tower on a big um, um, rock, and waves are clashing against it and against it, but the tower was not crumbling down. He was still staying there, and um, that was a moment where I thought, hey. 
everything is going to be fine tomorrow. You are going through it. You are strong enough. You are going to do it. And uh, a few, few years later, 2018, Aaron sent me a video from your service where you are praying for me during my um, therapy in West Germany. And uh, that is a sign where I can see there is a God. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he takes care for all of us. You didn't know me to, to that moment, 2018. We have never seen us before. Uh, but, and, and you sent me this video. Uh, that, that is something I would take every time in my heart. And um, that is the point where we have to see that we are going to recover our church. And that is what David said um, after this COVID uh, time, because COVID struck the church very, very hard. And we have to recover it for us, for the next generations and for the rest of the of, of, of Earth. Yes. You had a vision, brother. That's what you had a vision. <laughs> a vision yes, from the yes, Lord. That is the word for it. <laughs> yeah. yep. Anybody else? I'll give anyone one more chance. Anyone want to chip in Chris Whistler? I'll, I'll struggle to ask my question in a way that's probably coherent. But um, thanks, Jonas. I really appreciate uh, you, you talking with us tonight and staying up so late. This has been very, very good. I'm just wondering one of the things that uh, in the United States, um, that I think we have with a challenge, especially with our youth and as, as people are, are kind of growing up and learning about the world is uh, questioning, there's like a couple ways, right? You, one can question whether or not there is a God and one can question whether or not there is one true God, uh, the Christian God. You know, as you work with the youth in Germany, what do you find is the biggest barrier to helping people to, to bring people, youth into the church? Is it because they think there's no such thing as God and it's irrelevant to them? Or is it because they think, oh no, there are many gods and any of them could be completely fine and I don't wanna be, you know, exclude anyone. Any thoughts on that? Mm, you mean if it is a condition to, uh, for the youth uh, groups to come to church? Um, that they have to believe in the one, only, the only one Christian God or something? Uh, not necessarily is it a, is it a condition. I, I guess maybe, you know, Pastor Steve or Pastor Mike, one of you guys can help me with this a little bit, a little bit better. But it's, it's that, um, you know, in, in the United States, a, a very good thing in the education system, I think, is being accepting of everyone. You know, there's yes. more and more from when I was a child, um, you know, there's so much more work done with the teachers and everything to accept children however they are and people however they are, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. But I think because of that, sometimes because people have that sense, um, there are people who think, well, I, it, who am I to, to say that, that there's one, that my, my, my God with uh, no, I got his son, you know, so I, I just, I just wonder, um, you know, what, what do you, what do you see this, how do you see this playing out in Germany with you? Um, I was growing up like you, um, to accept everyone as he is, with all his uh, good uh, kinds and his bad kinds. So everyone is, is exactly in that way how God wants that this person is. So, and um, um, that is something... Um, especially in my job as an educator for children from age from zero to three, to give them that um, knowledge. Is that the word for it? Yes. Yeah. That they have to, to, um, to react with the people in their group in our kindergarten or with, the, uh, with older people, with the younger people, whatever, with respect, with respect for each other. That is um, written in the Bible. You know, when Moses gets the um, um the, uh, what is the english word for it it's two o'clock in germany the uh, yes uh, from from god um and uh, the rules from god where the stay that you have um to to love everyone as your brother as your sister you have to respect what your neighbor owns and uh, you don't have to to take it away from him and that is for me very, very important. So, and when there is a, a person who said, hey, I don't believe in the Christian God, but I'm believing in, um, in Allah, for example, it's totally okay. So, 
uh, we are not leave, uh, living in the um, uh, during the time of uh, crusaders where they have uh, where they are fighting for one god that is that is so old and that is still not true everyone is is has the chance to believe in that what he wants to believe in so i see amanda lee has her hand up Yes, I did. <laughs> Waiting for my turn. Hi, Jonah. It's nice to Hi. see you again. Hi. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned um, that Pastor Steve is cool. He walks about <laughs> on the <laughs> when he preaches, right? Yes. Not old fashioned. I think that's what you were trying to say behind a podium. Yes. I was just wondering, you know, I was thinking that you guys are cool. You guys have the best choir. You guys uh, sing like the sisters act, right? <laughs> <laughs> so how is that? Are you guys continuing with that? Is that bringing more, pe more people to the church? You know, we certainly don't have that um, to that level, right? Um, in terms of our church. But I was just wondering if that's something you guys are continuing at this time. Oh, I think that is a good um, fact uh, to uh, invite people to to come to the church, sing in the choir, or in, in our youth band, um, or to, to be a part of the senior club um, for older people. Um, uh, that is a wonderful um, offer um, for every age, I think. And um, it's a good way to, to catch new members for our church, of course, mm -hmm. of course. So you guys are continuing even at this pandemic time, your guys are singing along um no they are not allowed to to do it um because they are not allowed to um Gather. to meet at the same point and we don't have the technology as you uh, with the youth band um to to send um uh, the the music sheets uh, to every member of the choir and they have to uh, they can sing after after the sheet of paper because uh, in our we have two choirs. We have the gospel choir and we have the choir for older people. And especially the older people don't have the knowledge about technology like me, for example, but I don't have that big knowledge as, as for example, Aaron. Um, so that was not able. Um, uh, if you see, I had the opportunity to, to create the services during the beginning of the COVID pandemic on our YouTube channel. And uh, I tried to, to include them, send them the sheet of paper and said them, hey, sing it into the microphone, send it to, send it to me and I will mix it together. And uh, that was, was totally chaos. <laughs> so, uh, that was something where we have to work on. <laughs> but uh, one last sentence to, to Steve's way of pray. Uh, I don't know when you hold that pray, but you uh, use Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars in one of your pray. Um, and that was a moment where I was sitting here in my office and I was listening to your pray and I thought that is such a cool guy <laughs> to introduce <laughs> Star Wars to, uh, into his own pray. That is something what you would never hear here in Germany. So uh, there, that is a point where we are so uh, conservative. Is that the right word for it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that is something where we can learn from St. Luke, for example, or from uh, Lutheran churches in the USA. Well, Jonas, you got you got to listen to Mike Weaver too, because he's he's always out there with, with yeah illustrations yeah. that are engaging. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, switch us back here to gallery view, and uh, I think I want to move us to uh, to get back to the service. Uh, I just say this, uh, one thing that Jonas, I don't know if you were able to see this, but I know I've held this book up before. It's called Canoeing the Mountains because their staff and our elders are reading this. And uh, it's exactly what Jonas was talking about, having to adapt to the new reality uh, that he's having to see in Germany. And we have to do the same because the culture is changing around us. Doesn't yes. mean we give up our core values or our core beliefs by any means. The things that we say in the creed or our understanding of the authority of scripture, 
but how we go about our mission, we have to adapt. So if you haven't gotten this book and you would be interested in seeing what the leadership of our church is reading and being informed by Canoeing the Mountains by a guy named Todd Bolzinger. Can you send it to me in an email so that I can uh, take a yes. look on it? Yep, Perfect. I, can, I, I can send it, send the uh, the book for, you know, not the book, yeah. but the, the reference. I yes. was just looking to see if they have a German version of that book, but they don't, they don't see one. You have oh, to that is no problem. So I can teach my own English. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I can say it's canoe fahren in den Bergen. Yeah. Yeah. Fahren, yeah. In den Bergen. In den Bergen, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. did you just say, Weaver? I say canoe in the mountains. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I'm that gonna... is, was a good translation from you, Mike. Oh, thank perfect. you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank I, you. I, I know that Michael uh, Marger is, is learning German very good too. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, going to teach each other. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jonas, if you'd lead us in this prayer, you're going to do the response there, and then you're just going to pray for us in whatever way you feel led to pray, and then Mike will continue. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. So let us pray. Dear God, COVID is all over the world. Here in Germany, we raise every single Friday a candle in our windows for every person who died in case of COVID or who is laying in a hospital in case of COVID and for all the people who lost a person in case of COVID. We want to go the way back to normality. We want to go to our churches, want to celebrate services, meet our friends, give our grandparents a hug, but we please you, we beg you, give us the chance, the power to stay together in mankind, stay together in your love, in your grace, and under your saving good hand. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Help us to naturally share our faith that more will trust in Jesus and be saved. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Before we pray that prayer, Stephen, we'll pray for Jonas and the church in Barter. I'll, I'll finish with that. We give you thanks. Yes. Yes. Father, we're so thankful for our brother in Christ, Jonas, and uh, his wonderful spirit. It's so clear to see that the Holy Spirit is alive in him and is, is moving him and motivating him to, to serve you and to connect with people, to have the passion for the gospel of Jesus. We're so It just inspires us to see this uh, in, in this young, young Christian leader. We pray for his ministry, we pray for his schooling as he's getting ready to be a deacon. Uh, we pray that that will be able to be completed. We continue to pray for his health, that you would keep him in uh, cancer free. We pray for his marriage and someday that they would have a ch child together. Um, and we pray for the church in Barner. Um, we're praying that the new pastor there will come and bring uh, new vitality. We ask that you bless her ministry and leadership there. Lord, whether it be in Germany or in Columbus, Ohio, or wherever else, embolden your church to make the changes that we need to make so that we can reach more people for Christ and connect more people into growing relationship with Jesus. Lord, 
the people are walking in darkness and they need to see the great light of Jesus, who is the light of the world. We pray, Father, that you would help us to be good and effective in our missions wherever we are. Thank you, Jesus. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that, we, that you have this day so graciously protected us. We beg you to forgive us all our sins and the wrong which we have done. By your great mercy, defend us from all the perils and dangers of this night. Into your hands, we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.